Welcome to the TG110DL Thickness Gauge Video Tutorial. We will cover gauge setup and take a look at some of the special features this gauge has to offer. First, if you purchased your gauge from the factory, you will receive the gauge itself, the TG110DL, a probe cable, the LMD1, and an ultrasonic probe, this is the TG506. You will also be given a bottle of coupling. First, let's turn the gauge on and make sure the settings are appropriate for our application. Push the on-off key. Wait for the splash screen and then push any key to continue. Press the menu key. Push enter on display. Scroll down to units and select whichever one your application requires. We're in inches, but millimeters are available. To go back, push menu. Scroll down to select probe. Push enter. We can select any probe profile in this list but we'll just use auto. Notice no probe is displayed on the top. Now let's connect our probe to the cable. Red lead to red connector. Black lead to black connector. Now let's connect the cable to the gauge. Make sure the red dot on the cable matches up with the red dot on the gauge. Notice now the probe profile is changed to TG506. Before we can calibrate to a material, we'll need to zero the probe. Hit zero key. Now couple the probe using some couplant to the zero block on the side. Once it's flat and centered, push enter you'll see a value displayed. It's about 0.201 for the standard steel velocity setting. To change your velocity, you can use the up and down arrow keys. And you would do this to calibrate your velocity to whatever material you're measuring. We can also calibrate the gauge using a two-point calibration. So let's go ahead and do that. Go to menu, scroll down to two-point cal, hit enter. Now when you're Measuring a part, it's important to use a standardized calibration block of the same material. We'll use this steel one. This section is one inch thick, and this section here is two inches thick. First, we'll couple the probe to the thin section. And we'll adjust the displayed thickness to the actual thickness using the left and right arrow keys. While still coupled to the low thickness, push the down arrow key to go to high thickness. Now go ahead and couple to the high thickness section. Again, adjust the arrow keys to adjust the display. While still coupled to the high, go ahead and push menu. This will save the two-point calibration. You'll notice this little alarm light has come on. We can set the alarms in the menu. There are three modes and off. There's a low-high mode, high, and low. We'll go use the low-high mode and set our low value to 0.1 inch and our high value to 1.5 inches. Now I have this part here and say I don't know what the thicknesses are. I can go ahead and couple my probe to the surface push menu to go back to the main menu, main measurement menu, and when I couple my probe it'll display a thickness reading. Notice when we go to 1 inch and then to 1.5 inches the alarm light comes on and if I go down here go from 0.25 inches down below 0.1 inch the alarm light comes on again. In addition to the standard thickness mode, I also have three other modes. If you push the left arrow key, the first option displayed will be the differential mode. You can set a nominal thickness, and then the displayed thickness will be the difference between the nominal thickness and the actual thickness. My nominal is 0.5, so let's see what happens when I couple to 0.1.
the difference is 0.4 inches from 0.1 inch to the nominal 0.5. What if I try coupling to a section of 1.5 inches? You can see the difference is 1 inch between 1.5 inches and the nominal of 0.5 inches. The other mode is min hold. It allows you to scan across a part and the thinnest section recorded during that session is held. If I go back to a higher thickness, my minimum value stays. In addition to those two, we also have a time encoded B scan. If you hit the right arrow key, it'll take you to that menu. It gives you a real time picture of the thicknesses on a part. You can go ahead and pause the scan using the enter key. And you can resume the scan by pushing the enter key again. If you want to keep your settings as they are without fear of accidental adjustment, there is a screen lock feature. If you hold down the zero key and the on off key at the same time, you'll notice an L pops up. That's the screen lock indicator. Notice I can push any key here except for the on off key and there's no change. If I want to remove the screen lock, I do the same thing, hold zero and on off until the L disappears and I can once again change my settings. That concludes the setup and short tutorial. If you have any questions or any interest, please contact us on our website ndtsystems.com. Thanks.